Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we continue our study of Revelation chapter 21, covering verses 9 through 14, with a study titled, Introducing the Bride in New Jerusalem. As we shall see in reality, this is about our future home. The church is the bride, and the bride lives in New Jerusalem. Once you establish these facts, then you can begin to really enjoy the reality of your future home as a blood-bought, born-again, Bible-believing Christian. If you have questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can send those by email to bbbfohio at yahoo.com, or you can send your letter to Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085. And now we begin our study of Revelation chapter 21, verses 9 through 14, titled, Introducing the Bride in New Jerusalem. This is part one of two. All right, we're going to be in the book of Revelation. Revelation 21, 9 through 14. We'll open with a word of prayer. And um, then we'll get in the Word. Father, we thank You for this time in Your Word. We just thank You for um, everyone who is able to be here, those who are watching online, those who will watch and listen later on the Internet and uh, radio. And we just uh, thank You for the opportunity to get the Word out. But uh, it starts with the desire and the opportunity that we take advantage of here locally to join together for Bible study. We believe the King James Bible is the infallible Word of God. We believe every word of it, and we just ask the Holy Spirit to help us in our understanding of it, and that we would take it into our hearts and minds, and we'd go out the door and live it. And all these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> this is uh, introducing the bride in New Jerusalem. And you'll see why I used that title in just a minute. But it's Revelation 21, 9 through 14. If you want to turn your Bibles there. We will have it up here, but uh, I just want to encourage you to use your Bible, even while we're studying. Uh, we use the, the, the screens, and, and it has a lot to do with for our video uh, more than anything, but um, it's really nice. You open your Bible and you take notes. Just this week, I was reading something. And then I looked over at the note, something I'd written down, and I was like, oh, wow. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> and it reminded me of something that the Lord had shown me before. And then it helped me as I continued reading. And I was very thankful to have notes that I'd put there. And, you know, that's why a good study Bible is nothing wrong with it as long as you understand the notes aren't infallible. you got to test those notes. Um, you have to, uh, Acts 17.11, search the Scriptures to see if the things I'm saying are so to see if the comments, the notes in your commentary Bible are so. So anyway, Revelation 21, 9 through 14. Let's go ahead and read the text, beginning of verse 9. You can read it with me. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the Spirit, to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I personally um, have to be reminded of the incredible scene of this book as John talks to angels. Every once in a while, I have to remind myself, we just take it willy-nilly as we're reading. And John <laughs> is talking to angels. And it's the same, it's one of the angels that we'd already read about um, who uh, had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues. And 
just a reminder, this isn't in my notes, but I just want to remind you of this. It is true that angels are sent from time to time to speak to human beings. But never is it biblical for us to instigate the communication. It is never biblical for us to try to speak to angels. It's a big thing today in the New Age movement. And what you're going to do is if you do speak to a spirit being, it will not be a holy angel, it will be a fallen angel. And you will be deceived. And there's a lot of people out there who call themselves Christians, and then you get to talk to them, you think, where are they getting these ideas? And some of them are just totally apostate ideas. And you're like, where are these coming from? And then you find out that they have been in touch with spirit beings. Some of them... Um, you know, not all of their claims may be legit, but some of them, I believe, really have been, and some of it's through the inducement of drugs. And today, there's a huge number of professing Christians who are celebrating the fact that more and more states are legalizing marijuana. And the reason is, uh, the, the, the reason some of them are celebrating that is because they're already smoking pot, they're doing it illegally. And then when you find out they've got these wild and crazy ideas, you'll find out that's where those ideas came from, in an altered state of mind. And so as you read the book of Revelation, you should note that the angels come to John, and John is not giving any effort to talk to angels. And uh, this angel um, doesn't say, come up hither. That's just a small point, but it's important to note who he says. It talked with me saying, come hither. You remember Revelation 4.1 started out this whole thing with John hearing a voice saying, come up hither. Now we see John is in the heavens. He, is, he doesn't need to go up. So this scene is taking place above the earth. And John is already there, and he now quotes the angel uh, who talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And now this is where some people, I think in the hyper-dispensational groups, you'll find this, where they don't rightly divide, and they don't compare Scripture with Scripture, and they take this text and start teaching that the New Jerusalem itself is the bride. But that's not what the Bible teaches, that the church is the bride. And we'll go into some of that in just a second. But if you were taken, this is just a bit of a comparison analogy. If you were taken in a helicopter to see the U.S. president in his home, then you would first see, as you approached, you would see the White House as you approached him. So you're going to go see the President, and as you go, let's say you were, uh, you know, what do they call it? You want to live stream or face timing or what do they call it? And you were explaining it to somebody. You say, I'm going to see the President. Look! And you would show them, and they would see the White House. Because that's where the President and his family live. And that's the same sort of thing we're seeing here. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So now he takes John over to some great and high mountain on the earth again. And from this vantage point, now he sees the uh, new Jerusalem, holy Jerusalem it's called here, descending out of heaven from God. But it's not the city that's the bride. The city has the bride living in it. So if I'm going to show you the bride from where John is standing, then the first thing you're going to see is where the bride is living, which is the New Jerusalem. This is the place that the Lord Jesus spoke of in John 14, 1 to 3. In John 14, 1 to 3, it's a wonderful passage. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Listen to this. I go to prepare a place for you. That place is what we're studying right now. 
That's what Jesus is talking about. And He says, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto Myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now where we're reading in Revelation 21, Jesus has already come and uh, come again and taken His bride to be with Him, and His bride now lives in that holy city. That where I am, there ye may be also. Let that sink in as we're reading this. You and I, and all believers, are there in Revelation 21. John is looking at us. <laughs> Think about that now. In this, this vision, John is looking at the bride, and here comes New Jerusalem, and you're there. This is the future that we're reading about, and you're there. What John is saying, you're in there if you're saved. <laughs> I got such a kick about uh, out of that the first time I understood that. And like John is, I'm like being a window waving at him. <laughs> hey, John. He didn't mention it here, but. <laughs> <laughs> Big John. <laughs> Verse 10 ends and says, And showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. We, you, when, we went, when Jesus came and got us, that's where He took us. And now we're descending in this text. <laughs> You're descending in that city. That's the land of the free and the home of the bride. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Jenny, you need to write that down and put that in a song somewhere. Like my husband preacher once said, the land of the free and the home of the bride. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Remember we read this, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, look at this, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The New, the New Jerusalem isn't the bride, but prepared as a bride. Why? Because we are the adornment. We are the ones living there. We, the church, the bride, is living in that city. And that's why the city comes down as a bride adorned for her husband, not the bride. See, and that, listen, that, that is very important. You won't understand the Bible if you don't respect nuances. When the Bible says it, it means it exactly as it says it. So if you read something that says, as a bride, and you make it say, the new Jerusalem is the bride, you just change the Bible. You change what it's saying, change what it means. And then Scripture with Scripture, everything else we're reading, it's the place that the Apostle Paul spoke of in Galatians 4.26, and... The, this is important because one billion people profess to be Christians on the earth today who believe that the mother is the church. The Bible says, but Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. Listen, the, the church didn't give birth to you. You were born into the church, not born by the church. But see, the false cult of Rome teaches that the church gives birth to you when you are baptized by one of its priests and you receive Jesus when you eat of their wafer and their wine when they believe you're actually cannibalizing Jesus and eating His flesh and His blood. When Jesus basically was saying, when you eat of this bread, think of it as My body. And when you drink of this cup... Think of it as my blood. It's not actual flesh and blood. And that nonsense at the Mass is nothing but blasphemous superstition. And it's also disgusting because uh, actions have consequences. And if you eat Jesus, then later you flush Him. And the people who came up with that superstitious nonsense, called some of these guys called the church fathers, really didn't think it through when they came up with this nonsense. As we have done in previous studies, we'll show visual aids as we continue verse by verse. 
because I love some of these pictures that just give you an idea. And of course, on the wall here, if you look on the left side, uh, Peter Ruckman drew a little picture of the New Jerusalem, and he has a mansion there reserved in his name. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you're going to draw it, you might as well put, <laughs> put your reservation on there. Amen? But I love these pictures that people have drawn, not because we, you know, we, first of all, let's say this. No matter what you see in an artistic rendering, the real thing's going to blow it away. Amen? But then when you see these things, that blows you away. And so you're thinking, wow, wait till we see the real thing, you know? So, by the way, whether it's a pyramid or Square. Some people, I'm going to show you both. Some draw it as a uh, full pyramid, top and bottom, and others, the pyramid's kind of this way, and it's a square. And, you know, it's going to be wonderful to find out for sure which one is right, because I've read both sides, both views, and, you know, they both have great points. But uh, no matter what, it's going to be wonderful. Amen? <laughs> That's the point. Uh, verse 11, read that with me having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious. This is going to be a light like you and I have never seen before. The glory of God, her light was like unto a stone most precious. Again, this is how Peter Ruckman drew, he um, believed it was going to be a pyramid shape. I kind of lean that way to some extent. Um, but... Then when you hear the other side, you're like, I don't know about you, but I think, well, no, that sounds like... So, uh, again, either way, it's a wonderful thing. But um, it says, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Now, a jasper stone, clear as crystal is basically... Um, how many of you heard of you or seen these? The New Agers really get into this stuff. Crystals. And they, some of it's just beautiful. Um, the sad thing is, is they they believe there's the um, vibrations, the energy that come from those. And if you do certain chants and wearing your crystals and doing this and that, that it exudes spiritual energy and you know all that weird stuff. It's a shame that Satan always takes everything beautiful and perverts it, corrupts it. But there's nothing wrong with having crystals. There's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, you can decorate with them or whatever. The problem is when you try to turn them into some kind of a, uh, what, what, what do you call that, uh, like good luck charm, but what's the word um, I'm looking for? Uh, yeah, like an amulet or something like that. That's when it becomes a problem. Um, just There's a lot of Native American stuff that people have, and, and um, it really has an occult underlying to it if you believe what the Native Americans believe about it. How many of you have heard of the dream catchers, for example? They're pretty. And they, I, I like things like wind chimes. And, but, you know, wind chimes have a perverted side to them, you know. It's, but that doesn't mean I'm sinning by having a wind chime. Better not mean that because I got several of them. I love wind chimes, but that's what I'm saying is this guilt by association thing is a real troublesome thing to Christians. And a wind chime to me is just pretty, and it, the wind blows it. And when you mix the wind with the sound of the chime, and I've known some people who have these things that are dream catchers. They don't believe that it's actually doing anything. The, the Native American superstition was that the, uh, there are good dreams and bad dreams, and the good ones get caught in the middle and go right to the person who owns the dream catcher, and then all the bad ones are weeded out somehow by the way it's uh, designed. It's a silly thing. Superstition. But if you've got a dream catcher, I'm not going to come over to your house and I see it and go, Bless for me! You know, start yelling at you. And, you know, <laughs> it's... But I'll mention to you, and you know, you better be careful. Some people, you know, you might want to mention to people you don't believe the nonsense of the dream catcher thing, you know. Other than that, they're just pretty. Um, but I have trouble with, I have had a friend who had a Buddha out in his front yard. And, um, but it's funny because he always took his dog out to take a leak on it. it was, <laughs> so, 
It's funny. But I said, but your neighbors don't know you're doing that, and they're going to think you're some crazy Buddhist, you know. But Funny, I've never had a Buddhist come to my door and knock on the door and say, hey, we're from the Buddhist church of... You know. Buddha? Yeah, the, the church of Buddha of Latter-day Aints or whatever. <laughs> so verse 12 is Donald Trump's favorite verse. And had a wall. Build that wall. Mexico will not pay for this one. Amen. <laughs> and had a wall great and high and had twelve gates and, the, and at the gates twelve angels. Now most of the drawings you're going to see are going to look like this and they're going to have angels with wings. And I always tell everybody, that's just so that you know that those are angels and not you know, stalkers or anything like that, you know. <laughs> 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 I mean, some of the pictures... Now, that would kind of be... You may not even need to put wings on the angels there, but there are some pictures where there's an angel, and if you didn't have wings on, you'd be like, well, who's that guy? I just said, I thought it would be funny if they put like a shirt and a hat said angels, you know, like the baseball team. But I mean, you still know who they were. I like the movie. Yeah. Angels in the outfield. Angels in the outfield. And, but this, this is kind of neat, because uh, we'll come back to this in our next episode. The gates, a lot of times you see the gates of the New Jerusalem and they'll just be regular looking doors. Well, the Bible says each gate is of one pearl. That's got to be some oyster. <laughs> so uh, I think it's going to be... I don't, and you know, People say, well, how do you open it and close it? Well, that's, we'll, we'll look more into that when we get to it. Um, but uh, anyway, this is... And you'll notice we'll come back to this as well, but there's names over the doors. So I just like that. That was pretty, pretty good representation. It says, And names written thereon, which we pointed out, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Now, uh, somebody put me on the spot last week or so, and I, I named the twelve tribes, but I might have got them out of order. But I named them according to the Old Testament listing. And the thing is here... I believe that it's clear that the names mentioned here will match Revelation 7, which isn't the same as the Old Testament listing. How many? Uh, raise your hand if you know. Don't blurt it out. Raise your hand if you know the, the tribe that's missing in Revelation 7. Yeah, okay. Now, don't say anything. That, that, no helps, no helps. We're going to look at it. Revelation 7, 4 it says, And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed in 140 and 4,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Okay, well, look, what's it say? Of the tribe of Judah, of the tribe of Reuben, of the tribe of Gad. Okay, and then verse 6, Of the tribe of Asher, the tribe of Naphtali, the tribe of Manassas. That's six. The tribe of Simeon, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of Issachar. There's nine. And the uh, tri tribe of Zebulun, the tribe of Joseph, and the tribe of Benjamin. Now, of those of you who didn't raise your hand, did you pick up on the name? The one that's missing? Yeah, that oh, you realize you're wrong? I wrote it down. Well, see, okay, because so Charlie's going to learn something tonight. That doesn't happen every week. No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> we have a man in the room who's named after that tribe that is... He's actually named after a different, but his name's Dan. The tribe of Dan is not in that list. But in the Old Testament, obviously, he's one of the sons and was original part of those 12. Now, you, he's named after Daniel that came out of the lion's den. Amen? That's who he was named after. But if you go back and read about Dan, you'll see that Jacob prophesied that he would fall off his horse. <laughs> Symbolic. And you also see that Dan was uh, the tribe that first went into a very uh, Babylonian type of apostasy. And they even had a priest that was not uh, part of the Levitical priesthood, just like a religion today that has a priesthood that isn't Levitical. Actually, there's two. The Roman Catholic Church has a uh, priesthood that God never ordained. And then the Mormon Church has a priesthood. They call it the Melchizedek priesthood, which God doesn't have anything to do with. And they had images that they worshipped and prayed to, just like the Roman Catholic Church. And they had all kinds of secret, mystical 
uh, elements to their worship, just like the Roman Catholic and Mormon temple and the Masonic temples. So you see a lot of things. There ain't nothing new under the sun. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the names of the twelve tribes on the gates, they're going to be over each gate, one of these tribes, Judah, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Simeon, Levi, Issachar, Zebulun, Joseph, and Benjamin. And I recommend you take note of this. Learn the twelve tribes and learn, and you say, well, what happened? How did they fill in the blanks with Dan? Well, Joseph had a son named Manassas. And in the Old Testament, the uh, transliteration is Manasseh. There's a bad king by that name as well. That's not who we're talking about here. We're talking about the son of Joseph, Manasseh. And so that's who replaces Dan in the list of twelve. Learn that because it just makes it easier to understand the Bible as you study the Bible. And I tell you, every time I, I think of this, I, I'll have people say, I just can't learn that stuff. And then you turn around and talk to them about anything from Star Trek to Star Wars to Lord of the Rings to whatever, and they know every detail about all those fictitious, godless stories, but they can't learn 12 names in the Bible. Baloney. B-O-L-O-G-N-A. That's, a, that's the Greek transliteration. of. So... As it says, in names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, over each one of those gates, you're going to have that name written over the gate itself. And uh, we'll come back and talk more about this because of the pearl that we're going to talk about in a future study. So verse 13, there's a, uh, uh, three gates to the city. That's a, there's a great song uh, I think it's Southern Gospel, Black Gospel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, and the south three gates, and the west three gates. Now, how, what does that add up to? Twelve. Twelve. Amen. And, huh? Yeah, we're getting into math. No common core. Amen. Now, I just love this because every gate is going to open up to an incredible sight <laughs> that we can, I cannot even imagine what it's going to be like. Um, you know, it's just an amazing thing uh, that I think that not enough Christians spend enough time meditating on our future home. Um, I've had people say, I just feel like it's almost materialistic. And they, you know, too... <laughs> like they're too they're too spiritual to think about their future home God gave us all this information and wants us to, well let's look I think I might have a few things to say about that and the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb how many of you can name the 12 apostles you're not raising your hand because you're afraid I'm going to ask you to stand up and do it. I want to tell you, there's, it's not easy. That's harder to me, for me than the 12 tribes because only a handful of them get mentioned very often. Uh, Lebius, Thaddeus. How many of you, that ring a bell? <laughs> you know, it, you don't hear about, you know. We know 11 of the 12 names from the Gospels, but in the New Jerusalem, one of the original 12 isn't going to be listed. In Matthew 10... For solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.